All right. Well, welcome to Nikon Talks with Aaron, as my buddy Todd is yeah. saying here. So recently, Todd decided to go ahead and invest into the Nikon ZF, not the ZFC, the ZF, the full frame version. And uh, disclaimer, he has already unboxed it, but we're gonna do a little unboxing first and then we're gonna go through uh, some of the specs and some of our thoughts on it and hopefully help you make a decision on whether it's the right camera for you or Maybe it's not. So let's go ahead and unbox it and see cool. what it comes with. Yeah. I just couldn't wait the whole week to get started on it. Right. Well, I don't blame you. <laughs> All right. So yeah, I got the ZF, the 40 millimeter F2 SE kit. It's a special mm, yeah. 40 millimeter that they made just for this, I guess. Um, so to start, you've got a fancy USB C to C cable. Okay. Because that doesn't come with a charger. So that's the only way you can. Uh, charge the cameras through USB-C. Gotcha, right. um, you've got all your manuals in, what language is that? French? I, I don't Maybe know. something. Oh, Spanish. Oh, Espanol. And people, then, manual. yeah, <laughs> and then you've got your, oh, just your serial number warranty stuff. serial number stuff. So that USB-C cable was USB-C to USB-C, not USB-A, which is and, actually uh, different from the Z8, Z9, Z6, the stuff that I have have all been USB-A and to USB-C. Like iPhone, it doesn't come with a charging brick. Wow, well, yeah. <laughs> so what should we start with? Um, first thing, you got your battery, an EL, ENEL15C, which I learned the other day, the difference in the model number, mm -hmm. uh, the C means it's USB-C rechargeable. Oh, so interesting. To charge through the camera. Which is the same battery that comes with the Z8, and uh, I did talk a little bit about the battery difference between the Z8 and Z9 because the Z9 comes with an 18D battery, which is more of a pro body style and everything, but you can check that out. Oh, your fancy little Nikon fancy strap. Fancy Nikon strap, which- Oh, that's even different, yeah. I if have you see... uh, gotten rid of in favor of right. the Peak Design <laughs> strap that I use. It's not great, but it's nice that it comes with it. You would trade that for a charging brick though. Yeah, for sure, yeah. <laughs> any day, any day of the week. So that's a little different too. Normally it comes with some yellow accents on it. So yeah. That's, yeah. Um, then we have the lens. So this is, you know, for already having unboxed this, you've done a really good job of reboxing. Thanks, <laughs> Thanks a lot. I tried. So this this came with the kit, right? This was you got the Correct. forty the millimeter, forty millimeter yeah. SE, the special edition forty okay. millimeter cam uh, lens. Right. The only difference um, I've seen is that it's got a painted silver rim mm. around the edge here. Is it functional? Which is no. Oh. It's supposed to act like a uh, <laughs> <laughs> a uh, aperture switch. Right. But it does so is, not. Is there anything functional in the lens? Other than the focus ring, no. Oh, okay. So it does. Yeah, have it does a, have a functional focus okay. ring. Yeah, and then oh, that's nice. the craziest thing is how close. Oh, the flange, the, uh, yeah, the rear the flange element. Distance, yeah. uh, the, I've never seen an element yeah. that close to the edge of the lens. It's pretty unbelievable. And then now we have the body. The beautiful oh. little body. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> and you just got the black one? Yep. You know, no fancy. It does come in six any colors. Stuff. Yeah, it comes in orange, blue. Yeah. I can't remember the yeah, other colors. They got but... a green and yep. uh, some interesting so colors. I guess, uh, there's nothing else in the box. Just chunk that. <laughs> Literally. <laughs> so there Very we nice. have the ZF body. Uh, so let's go ahead, I guess, and just kind of talk about the different sides of it and the what ZF. it offers. So. Yeah. So, I mean, I guess one of the main reasons I bought this camera was because of how it looked. Yeah, I mean, it's a pretty sweet camera. I, uh, it's definitely different. Um, but I know it's a throwback, right? To yeah. the more retro style. And yeah, the first uh, the first camera I ever got to shoot on was a Nikon FM2, I think, um, okay. back in high school in my 35 millimeter photography class. And uh, this one looks a whole lot like it. Yeah, that's what it's modeled off of, which first came out in 1982. Got my notes here. Anybody that is a subscriber <laughs> knows that I love my notes because me yeah, but I, I absolutely love having the dials on the top of yeah. it. Um, the other day when we were shooting at the ice park, I really realized how handy it is having these right here because mm -hmm. when you're just shooting, you can rank up the ISO or the shutter speed yeah. really easily. Uh, and I know that these dials have always been for that, but I feel like these are easier. 
Yeah, I mean, it's, a, it's just a cool difference, cool visual, and I'm sure yeah. there's a, a time and place where, especially if you're kind of on a tripod, looking down at it, it's a little more comfortable to work from the top down and than you know like exactly kind of reaching, reaching around necessarily. Yeah. So, and granted, this has no grip like a real right. camera, would. which is um, especially shooting in a vertical orientation. You know, this is a tiny little, it's not very, much, you know, that's yeah. a pretty small little grip there. So, which makes it even more impressive that they fit all that technology into this that is true. tiny little body. Yeah. Well, real quick, let's just go over kind of each side okay. and what everything's on it. So yeah, you have the USB-C port, which is for charging and data transfer. Um, it allows charging of the battery while you're using the camera, right. which is nice, um, as long as you have the EN-EL15C battery. Right. Under this little door, we've got a micro HDMI, the mic input, and a headphone output. Cool. And that's pretty much it. Yeah. And you've got your beautiful, yep. fully articulating screen. Why that's not standard on all cameras is beyond me. Pretty unbelievable. Drives me nuts. Yeah. But it is what it is. Maybe it will be a thing that comes to the rest of the Nikon cameras, but it is nice that yeah, they nice. finally have added. Nice yeah, leather is, backing. Yeah, you can show that. That's a nice little textured background there. Mm -hmm. And then the button layout is, you know, for anyone that is familiar with Nikon, um, you know, it's pretty similar, but they did do something interesting where they put the playback button back up into the top left, uh, which I know is kind of controversial back when the Z6 and Z7 came out because people are used to it being down in the bottom right, so your right thumb can just hit it real quick. So it was a little interesting, but you know, again, not, not a huge yep. deal, but you might just have to kind of retrain yourself. And then moving to the bottom, you've got your, what is that, a quarter 20 screw? I, don't I think know. it's a quarter twenty. Yeah, screw. I always get those mixed up. But, but on the bottom, the standard one. <laughs> you have your standard tripod mount screw, um, right. and then you've got the battery door where you can put a micro SD card. Interesting choice, and an SD card in there. Right. So it's nice that they do allow at least dual, so you do have that option, which is um, understandable. It's such a small body. Right. But I feel like then today's world, like dual cards, is pretty. Uh, standard like people kind of have grown to expect it and everything yep and then yeah on the top here you have you've got your shutter button as shutter well as the on off switch off. Um, you've got your exposure compensation dial um, which is similar to Sony's cameras has a yeah, lot of them have do. something like that so if you're used to and that. on my Sony it was like on the side here mm -hmm. uh, more than that and then on the top center here next to the viewfinder you've got your shutter values. Mm -hmm. It even locks when you put it into third step there. Mm -hmm. And it goes all the way to four seconds and bulb. I believe there's a setting though that turns it to where you can do 30 seconds on this. Okay. Mm I haven't figured that out yet. Yeah. And then you've got your ISO dial. Right. So you can go all the way up to just over 51,000 on the dial here. Right. And I believe it actually it has the largest or widest ISO range, it actually can go all the way up to 64,000. Yeah, there's an extended setting. I don't know who's shooting at 64,000 ISO, but the base ISO is 100 uh, ISO, which is pretty standard for 24 megapixels. Um, but yeah, so I mean, you will have a very wide range and all of any of these mirrorless cameras now, I mean, you can easily go up to 12,800. This weekend and at the at the ice fine. park, I shot at 12,000 in those dark areas. Right. I was just, you know, using that fit, um, 24 to 200, and I just yep. rake up the ISO and I put it up at 12,000. I think that's as high as I went to test it, but there's like no clarity loss. It's pretty ridiculous. Right. And and there's that, definitely still some noise, but right. And they say that the small prime lenses are for it. But did you mm -hmm. feel fine with that 24 to 200? Yeah, I wouldn't want to go with anything bigger than that. Okay. Though. Um, like the 2.8 lenses probably would get a little large right. for this camera. Yeah. It's definitely, I think you're a little bit more to like a travel kind of, you know, Absolutely. walking around a, yeah. you know, a city or, you know, just kind of, it's not really meant necessarily for like super like professional high end shooting and stuff like that. And apparently, so uh, just real quick, something to add here is that there what there is the ZFC, which is an APS-C camera, 21 megapixels, and that comes in at 959.95 USD. 
Uh, so just under a grand there, but that really is geared for vloggers. Um, you're gonna deal more with the APS-C lenses and it's not, you know, I think it's actually geared a little bit more for video than it actually is for photo. Um, but, you know, that's a little more plasticky feeling. It's a little bit smaller. Like this definitely replicates kind of that hard knocks, like old school yeah. Nikon camera. This one's got the full magnesium alloy body. Yeah, so yeah, yeah. It, like it feels substantial right. in your hand. And the closest thing I can think to compare it to is an Apple product with how, <laughs> like how- Just feels good. Small and full of weight that it is. Gotcha. You know, it just feels so solid yeah. and put together. So why did you buy it? And a little bit, I guess, start with kind of like your background a little bit with cameras yeah. briefly and then kind of what led you to well, this in, decision. Well, in, um, in high school, I shot on a Nikon FM2 or FM3. I can't remember exactly which one it was, but it was a 35 millimeter camera. And um, I got the experience of going into the dark room at our high school and fully developing the photos from scratch. And it was pretty awesome. Um, and I really enjoyed photography, so Soon after that class, I, my parents or my aunt got me a Nikon D3000, mm. um, and I got into digital photography soon after that, and um, just kind of went from there. It dropped off for a few years, and then I moved to Colorado and had to start taking pictures because it's pretty ridiculous here. Mm. Yeah, so when I got here, I bought a Samsung uh, <laughs> Nex, NX300 or something like that. Uh, interchangeable lens, Samsung mirrorless, terrible camera. Didn't even know Samsung made. <laughs> exactly, <laughs> yeah. Um, that was a blemish. Okay. And uh, then I borrowed a friend's Canon for a few years and moved on to Sony when I bought my own. I bought an A6000, decided I didn't want to be on crop sensors anymore, so I moved up to an A7 III. Okay. Um, and then I just wanted another upgrade and I got to talking to Aaron and we ended up on Nikon and then this came out and uh, I mean, it looks so cool. Yeah. I think that's pretty much it for yeah. the reason I bought this camera. Um, I mean, on top of the amazing technology that they managed to fit inside this, it is really pretty. Right. I, so that, yeah, that definitely kind of leads into, I guess, you know, the target audience. So, I mean, if you're watching this video and you're wondering if this camera's for you or not, I mean, of course, how I normally say is that budget should be your first concern. Like, yeah, you definitely right. don't go in debt. I you know, sold over. my other camera to make it here. Right, you know, don't, don't just go spend a bunch of money on a camera if you're not really sure you're going to use it and whatnot. But, you know, I think that who this is mainly for is probably someone that has some photography experience, someone that does want to use the manual controls because that's definitely like a big yeah. aspect of kind of the aesthetics and the uh, form factor of it. And, uh, you know, someone that has been considering maybe investing into the Z system and everything. Um, I, I, I think that this is primarily geared to someone that wants a camera that's going to do a lot of things that doesn't need to be top end, but it's going to be a statement piece as well. Like it's an aesthetically a ple uh, aesthetically pleasing yeah, <laughs> piece of kit, and it uh, definitely you know it's going to stand out and kind of be that throwback, which is definitely a trend right now in our society to kind of. You know, we always recycle trends and the stuff retro, like that. The retro, the nostalgia. So, yeah, I think it's cool. And yeah, you can see there, that's that, you know, with that silver ring. They could have made it functional, but you know, they didn't. So, <laughs> and before we forget, uh, you just grabbed your grip. Now you don't have the official small rig one, right? I don't, I actually bought the newer one solely because of the red line. The red line, yeah, yeah. the red accent. Um, it is like $10 cheaper, but okay. um, it was more just for the accent piece than anything else. Can you kind of put it on there? Do you, oh yeah. yeah, so it comes with a little twisty on the bottom, yep. right? It's a little so quarter way. 20 screw. And, and then you, you can just do kind it of set it on the camera hand. and twist it into place. Nice. And there it is. So you've got a hefty Order. hand grip, because I have, not large hands, but good, uh, good size right. hands. Is that a thing? Well, yeah, I guess okay. so. <laughs> um, You're a grown so man. So <laughs> with the actual, with the with the camera the way it is, my two fingers would kind of slip gotcha. off the edge yeah. there. This gives it the full, the full nice. range. And yep, can you still access 
the battery compartment with it yep. on. Sweet. Sure That's can. nice. Right I hate there. that when you get a grip <laughs> and then you have to take the grip off to change the battery. Like, yeah, that's really point? annoying. And then you've got two quarter 20s down here for mounting. Um, not really sure why there's one offset. Right. But, but just it's like there. maybe a tripod, tripod plate. Yeah. Or I maybe guess so. an L bracket. Um, I don't know. And then you've actually got one on the right side for okay. portrait shooting, which portrait. is really nice to have. Um, but that's pretty much That it. might just be like a cold shoe mount. That's what it looks like. That's what Maybe I thought Maybe just too. Be able to slide that yeah. on if you want to do some vertical shooting. You could put shooting. like a microphone in or yeah, anything yeah. on that side. So that's Kinda nice. Handy. That's probably more for vlogging type stuff. Yeah. So. yeah. Well, so yeah, I mean, you've had the camera for how long now? Just under 10 days. Just I don't know, <laughs> eight, nine days. Specifically, yeah. <laughs> Well, you've gotten to do some shooting. I know we went down to Uray, Colorado and did some uh, photos of those ice climbers and stuff. Uh, have you shot anything else? Um, yeah, we took some photos with uh, buddy Kyle and... Oh yeah, we did. Yeah, <laughs> that's <laughs> and that's true. pretty much it up to this point. Yeah. Uh, I took a couple photos of my wife, but the majority of what I shot was at the <laughs> ice park. Yeah. <laughs> Well, we'll go ahead and show you some of those sample photos of Todd and uh, be sure to give him a follow on Instagram. He's not into the YouTubes, but uh, if you want to check out his page on Instagram, he's got some really cool photos. So I'll give you a little slideshow now. Well, yeah, so I hope you enjoyed those photos. I mean, uh, is there anything else you want people to know? Any other No, that's tidbits? pretty much it. I just yeah. wanted to make sure people got to see this because when I looked, there was very few reviews yeah. or showing anything about this camera. So yeah, I think maybe what we can do is try to do a little more testing with it in the yeah. coming weeks and months going into summer and then maybe to do that. we can do like a six month review. You yeah, know, maybe absolutely. some firmware updates can come out and we can see how the camera is evolving, and maybe uh, if the Z63 comes out, then we can uh, look at some of that comparison. I will not be buying it to compare. No, but Sorry. we can at least look at <laughs> specs and maybe readdress, you know, who who this would be for and all that kind of stuff. So, yeah. all right. Well, I hope you found this video useful. I know it was a little bit different; it might be a little bit long, but hopefully, it was able to help inform you on either information or whether this would be a good purchase for you. And as always, feel free to leave some comments or a like or a follow or subscription, whatever they Definitely call it, um, or don't, it's up to you. But uh, I guess, yeah, with that, that is gonna be it for this one. So until the next one, see Have ya. A good one.